everyone. So today at Kikas Founder Series, we have three amazing women entrepreneurs who are going to talk to you about social media in a crisis. So um, let me first introduce you these three amazing women entrepreneurs who are joining us today. Uh, first, we have Roshnali Amar Sekare, who is the founder of Spark Bookkeeping. Uh, so Spark Bookkeeping is a bookkeeping and accounting service for startups and small business owners. And we also have Nafia Salim, co-founder of Plushbox, uh, which is a curated gifting service. And we also have Shamima Shah Jahan, CEO of Soul Sisters Circle, which is a dedicated membership platform for uh, women who are who are looking for growth uh, around the world. So let let me let me like dive into this conversation to find out what do these ladies do and why they do what they do and how they are doing it. So let me first talk to. Uh, I'm so super excited for all three of you guys. So welcome on board for the founder series and thank you so much for accepting our invitation to join uh, and to share these your thoughts knowledge and know-how on this topic uh, so hi ladies hi. hi okay so let's let's first uh, go into uh, the chat uh, with like about why you do what you do um, let's uh, start off with rosh uh, so rosh uh, so you you started your startup during the pandemic, right? Um, how has that journey been so far? And uh, uh, there is a really nice meaning behind the term spark uh, in your spark bookkeeping startup. So I would like for you to share why uh, why you chose that name and what you do right now, and like how has that journey been so far? Yeah, thank you, Sasmini, for the opportunity, first of all. So the journey of Spark, we started, um, initially we started working on it in June, and then we officially kind of launched in August, and it has been amazing, four months. And uh, and also in that journey, I found the kick -ass community also, and it has boosted the uh, performance of the company so so much and i'm so grateful for that so the name behind spark has uh, technically two meanings so one is uh, what is the spark that we are creating for the startup community by uh, giving financial information because uh, bookkeeping and accounting and financial information is very critical for the success of a business Okay, I mean, everybody knows that. So uh, it, we are not only providing like bookkeeping and accounting, but also analyze that and also like provide financial in, uh, insight for the company to spark that company to the next level. So that is the uh, main re reason behind the name Spark. Then also like there is this personal uh, reason where like, uh, this is a spark in my life also because I started during pandemic and also there was uh, things that was going in my life also. Mm -hmm. So this like uh, baby of mine, I would technically call it. Okay, so baby of mine is like a spark in my life also. So that is the main uh, reason for the name, uh, company name also. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. I, I think uh, it is very important to getting your numbers right when it comes to a startup or be it start for a small business. So uh, exactly. that is a very uh, <laughs> nice uh, concept behind your business. Thank you so much, Rosh. And then let's move on to Nafia. So Nafia, it's been four amazing years, I would say. Uh, and uh, I hear from you why you started what you right and like how has those four years been so far uh thank you Sasmini. um so like you mentioned yes we just turned four um and it's been quite an interesting ride lots of highs lots of lows like any business uh, but initially we started um plushbox because i because i just moved to sri lanka and 
me and my business partner had had quite a lot of instances where we wanted to buy gifts for a lot of our loved ones in Sri Lanka. And at the time, there was just not much available that could be purchased online. Um, you know, we both come from design backgrounds. So we were looking for gifts that were a lot more like aesthetically pleasing, uh, a little bit more refined, packaged beautifully, and that that was just not uh, available here. Um, so, I mean, essentially, we started Plushbox to fill that gap, um, you know, and we've um, sort of grown into like a little, little team of five people now, um, you know, we curate gifts for our retail customers for anniversaries, birthdays, um, births of babies and all sorts of occasions, as well as for our corporate customers. Uh, we do hampers and media kits, um, you know, invitations for events, um, etc. cetera. Um, and I think the most important thing is like at the core of it, you know, in terms like Plushbox is a brand that, you know, has really evolved. Um, the way we look at it is we don't really sell product or we don't really sell a, um, like a gift itself, we're really actually selling an experience or a feeling. Um, they're very much in the business of creating these magical moments. Um, and that's sort of how, how we look at it. Um, yeah, and it's been four years, like I mentioned. So it's been pretty great. Thank you so much. And I'm young. I have been following uh, you guys for like past two years. And I think uh, I learned about uh, curated gift gift services through your brand so uh, kudos to those uh, the creating that trend in Sri Lanka too I guess <laughs> and uh, Shamima uh, so I'm so excited to have you here uh, and oh, thank uh, you. Uh, sorry I said thank you <laughs> <laughs> I thought you couldn't hear me sorry there's a lack in my um, uh, so I just want to want you to share like uh, you started Soul Sister Circle a few months ago, and uh, there is a journey leading up to it. And I do know personally because you have been um, working with us, uh, do, going through some of our mentoring sessions to meeting mentors and uh, portraying yourself uh, and working on that uh, journey. So uh, would you like to share with everyone else as well what your journey has been so far? And... Uh, how has it been to transform lives of women? Oh, yes, thank you. So when I actually joined Kickass, I was actually running two brands. So one of the big takeaways for me was to learn to focus on one, grow it, automate it, and then go to follow other passions which are on totally different paths. So uh, proceeding from Kickass and getting mentoring from Hatch, the first thing I was able to do is focus on Soul Sister Circle and build it ground up. So it essentially is a platform for the growth-driven women, specifically from the Islamic faith, because that's what my niche is. So growth-driven women from all around the globe who want to accelerate their personal growth infused with faith, and although there were not much promotion per se, if I were to say, I felt like there was so much demand, which is what enabled us to go to the scale it is today and is still continually growing. So I think that personal branding and taking your expertise online is one of the ways in which you can not just establish yourself as an expert in your field, but also monetize so you can um, really bring in cash to do the things that you are passionate about. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, I know that it's been a great journey for you in terms of transforming lives as well as transforming yes, yourself yes. into where you are right now. Uh, thank you so much for sharing, Shamima. So let's uh, go a bit deeper into the conversation where we are going to now we heard what you do, why you do that, and like let's see what, how you are doing it and the, in context of our, uh, the topic at hand. So, Roche, um, so tell us, how are you utilizing social media as a service brand to tell your story? Yes. So social media, uh, I would say there are three platforms that I use. 
which is LinkedIn, uh, Instagram, and Facebook. So for me to, as a, when you take like a service brand, uh, there is no actually a physical product for you to show it to the customers and like promote it. So that unless like, until like you actually deliver the service, they are not going to uh, experience the service or like get um, what is the value that I'm creating. Okay, so what I did was initially like I need to spread the word also about what are the services that are that I'm offering. So what I did was directly I messaged to like I identified like small businesses and I directly messaged them saying these are the services that we are providing and what kind of value that we are creating for our clients. So it actually brought us so many clients and even like clients. Uh, inquired so much uh, when we like send like direct messages because actually there is no physical product for me to show since I'm like a service brand and also like uh, I would say like networking with people because like um, networking is so much important in a in a startup community also like uh, because um we are in a pandemic situation also. So um, social media allows you to like network without actually physically meeting the person. So in this uh, uh, pandemic situation, in this crisis, social media has boomed a lot because people are at home and there are so many businesses are coming up. So social media is critical for the success of a business. Uh, also, it can be a product base, but also for a service brand, if you know how to uh, share your knowledge. This is something I learned from Kikas community also, thanks to Naomi. So um, this is because I struggled so much. I didn't know like how to promote my business, right? As I told you, like it's a service brand. So I through Kikas, I learned like so many people, even my uh, Kikas uh, ladies told me like, Rosh, why don't you like promote your knowledge? And that is one of the key uh, things because then I can show what I know. How can I contribute to a small company? So I started a mini blog series. So I read like different, different blogs uh, based on uh, topics related to startup. It's, it's not only finance because uh, when you are a, uh, bookkeeping and accounting and also a consulting kind of a company you are not only like providing accounting related services now clients are like it's like opportunity also like clients are dependent on me to give more knowledge about many areas so i read like a lot of blog articles and create mini blog so uh, people like can like check those uh, mini blogs for like two or three minutes per day and uh, it's something I really um, boosted my sales and also the knowledge sharing and also like uh, it's something mainly I got from uh, Kikas group I said so much thank you for that. All right thank you so much Roche and uh, I think uh, it is very very important what you said uh, in terms of networking uh, to actually like as a service brand communicating the um, that you actually these are the services that you're providing and this is the know-how and this is the team and this is how we do it uh, those kind of things through social media can add benefit to this exactly and, uh, that's an important point thank you uh, so Nafia um, so Plushbox uh, as we have seen on social media is predominantly uh, like a portrait as a lifestyle brand more than like a hard selling you know, uh, most of the approaches are not hard selling right uh, so how how did you made up your mind about this is the way i'm going to do this and what it's asked me to get caught up not to share um, you got uh, yeah, part. It, it's all right. No problem. Um, that's okay. Um, so with Flashbox, I think from the beginning we did get a lot of slack for um, being like for portraying ourselves as a lifestyle brand. 
Um, but I think we've kind of stuck to our guns and gone with it because it's truly what we believe and do believe is the right approach. Um, when we started Plushbox, um, you know, four years ago, we looked at a lot of other brands that were doing really well um, in our space and out of our space. And we very much, we noticed there was a, you know, there was a shift in direction. A lot of, a lot of brands that were very much selling product were actually selling a lifestyle more than, more than actually a product. Um, and we also just reflected on the kind of kinds of brands that we as young people gravitated towards. And it was, it was always those, the brands that were telling us how cool or how exciting or how nice it was to own a product, not really telling us to buy their product. Um, and it made us want to kind of be involved in kind of that community of people who own that product rather than actually having that physical product. So that was always the approach from day one. Um, and I think it's just made us a stand out and be a better brand for it. Um, because I think, you know, like even in terms of, um, yeah, it just in, in terms of how we want to portray ourselves on social media, you know, like everything is curated, yes, but it's also very meticulously done for a specific reason. Um, if you look at our social media, we're not just selling boxes all the time. It's also about people and expressions, gestures, art, and all sorts of things. Um, and, you know, it's at the end of the day, just to answer your question about like what to share and what not to share. Um, I, I also feel, you know, sometimes you may be running a luxury brand, but you may not necessarily be someone who indulges in luxury goods. And I don't think you're doing your brand a favor by really portraying your life or, you know, like all these intimate details about you, because at the end of the day, your customer who's coming to your brand to purchase a luxury good then does not identify with, you know, your lifestyle. So for us, um, me and Hwan are quite private in our social media. Like if you look at our personal social media, I think we post like once a year. Um, but, you know, like, and that's because it's just not who we are. And therefore we've not really pushed ourselves out there, but we use, you know, the the brand to really like, like help uh, tell our message, um, which is again about those moments and magical things, the journey, the act of giving, um, you know, the emotions and the feelings behind everything. Yes, and I, I think you guys are doing a great job at communicating that message because that's what I have been seeing on your uh, social media so far, like uh, about being gifts and uh, or different uh, on different occasions. And like, it has made me, like I'm just sharing my personal experience as a customer for you. Uh, may make me also feel like I need to buy something for my uh, brother's birthday, things like that. So, right. So I think that uh, communication message, uh, brand, uh, communicating those brand values uh, is working out really great. Thank you, Shamima. Uh, thank you, Nafia, sorry. Uh, so, Shamima, um, yeah. uh, tell us, tell us uh, how, like, how you help women to utilize social medias social media to grow and like how have you been um, uh, helping them out in building their personal brands so essentially what I do is run a personal brand but in terms of the actual service that I provide is coaching that is around personal development right so it's not necessarily business based but more so of life coaching but however while I am working on my passion and spreading the message, it's also important for me to look at the business aspects of it. And like Nafia said, um, you know, contrary to most of the quote unquote influencers that basically uh, depend on brands and get deals and move forward, personal brand for me specifically has been to convey the message and the value I want to share with them and to kind of form a relationship based on the message that I have. Because essentially only if people buy into the message I have to share, will they become a client, if that makes sense, right? So again, like Nafia, for me, it hasn't necessarily been, hey, this is what I eat or this is what I wear, but this is what I believe in and this is what why you should invest with me because if you do invest with me, this is the transformation that I can give you. 
So it's more so about value driven as opposed to product driven or a lifestyle driven, right? Um, and that being said, however, although I am not posting it, this is what I ate or this is where I went, it's essential for me to be present online on a daily basis because building a personal brand, especially when you are new out there, you have to know the three keys that is know, like, and trust. Only when people know you, will they like you? And only when they like you and know you, will they trust you and then eventually make the purchase. So that's how it has been in terms of the way I use social media, uh, essentially to build trust in people so that eventually they can really benefit from what I have to offer. Because if I'm not going out there and telling them, hey, this is how you can transform your life by working with me, then I will be essentially doing a disservice to the potential clients. Because I believe that all the brands who are out there who are successful, it's not necessarily about how can I get the money out of their pockets into mine, but it's more about how can I transform their lives and make it better with the product or service that I have to offer. So that's how it has been for me. So one thing that was uh, one thing that was communicated during all three of your messages was uh, the key to uh, handling social media, in, even if it is a crisis or not, it is basically the communicating your brand values in, uh, in, a, in such a way that your client customers are relatable to it, right? Um, so, uh, and also uh, I think Shamima has like a merge of what uh, Roshanali and Nafia has like a product and as well as a service. And uh, you have to utilize uh, your personal account as well as what you do with the Soul Sister Circle in order to communicate uh, the brand value, right? Um, so uh, thank you so much for the insights on how you utilize social media. So I want to uh, move our conversation into advices and tips that you can give uh, the startup founders to women in uh, women entrepreneurs. Uh, so uh, uh, like, let's move to Roshanali. Uh, since uh, that you started your startup during a COVID, uh, during a pandemic, what sort of advice or tips do you have for those who want to start right now? I, I mean, like, we are in the middle of, we are sort of at the end, I, I suppose, uh, of a crisis, but we don't know what's uh, waiting for us in 2021. <laughs> I'm so scared. And uh, and a crisis doesn't necessarily mean just a world crisis. It uh, means like uh, it, it can be a personal crisis to financial crisis to a world crisis. So um, I know your founding story and uh, what you have uh, gone through as a founder. So uh, would you like to share your advice or tips uh, on your experience? Rosh, you are on mute. Sorry. Yeah, of course, Tasmini. So I would say um, if you have an idea and uh, if you believe in your idea and what is the value that you're actually creating for your customers or your clients, you're already there because unless you're believing in your product and your value that you're creating for your clients or your customers, nobody's going to come and believe for you because that is shown in your messages. What is the market in the marketing tip that you're using or whatever the message that you're trying to give it to your customers, it's reflect whether you believe it in your product or not. So I would say, first of all, believe in the services or the product that you're giving to your customers. And also, it's not always about money. And because we are going through a pandemic and everybody is struggling right now. Even I, I started uh, working on it somewhere in June and I was personally struggling to, to as well. So not... Uh, pandemic but in a personal way so like everybody is going through something at the, this moment especially so it's not always about money but also like how we can rise together in this situation so especially like I work with a lot of startups so 
like i look into like what is the value actually i can give to this startup how can i take it to the next level because if i can do that trust me me i mean they are going to be with the with me when in during their good times right so like if i can help them right now without considering about the money but actually creating a value and building that startup company because those startups are not going to be startups forever like nafia i mean she started four years back and it's grown into a big business right now and all these startups are going to go into that stage one day so if you can create some value that relationship and trust with those startups obviously they are going to speak on behalf of you so if you have an idea i would say get some consultation done because uh, you don't need you don't want to like really dump huge sum of money at this moment i would say get some consultation see whether this is going to be a viable uh, idea or like a product or a service because a uh, lot of businesses are start uh, closing down but also like there's so much of unemployment and people are at home they are trying out new things i mean there is basically a boom in the startup community i would say in the, because of this pandemic so i would say yes like maybe the the economy is not so great but also like there's so much of opportunities that has been created for you and if you have like an amazing idea that you trust so much that you can give some value believing it and also work towards it i mean there will be resistance from your parents from your whoever that is because for me basically uh june july till august nobody knew that i'm actually planning to start this kind of a company so i worked on my own because uh of course like uh, at this time period parents also wants you to have like a permanent job kind of a thing because of everything that is going on but i believe so much that i can give something um, to the startup community to build sri lanka and also like it's 100% i'm even though i'm the still the only person who is working for it i'm going to keep it all women driven company so i believe in the value that i'm creating and also the empowerment that i'm bringing to like startup community and also women entrepreneurs so any uh, because people women are at home and because of kids and household responsibilities and all so i want to create it like a, a women based company to give job opportunities and all uh, so i would say believe in you yourself your product your service and you are good to go so we have the idea to work for you even if it is through a crisis right um and also uh, thank you for pointing out the fact that if you have an idea and if you're not sure whether your idea is going to work out um consulting as you said but like uh, industry experience to uh thank you so much rosh um so nafia um since you've been here for four years we are going to hop on that fact <laughs> that your experience is immense when it comes to uh, facing um, um i believe um, um sasmani is well, talking uh, about the easter sunday attack um, all right Asmini Yeah uh can you guys Sorry, hear okay. me Am I the only one Yes I can hear you now Okay okay uh can you 
It was a bit lagging, but I can hear you now. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so, Nafia, I was saying um, since you <laughs> had to go through two crises uh, at a row, right? Uh, Easter Sunday attacks and then the pandemic came in. Uh, so, what is your experience as a founder? Uh, what sort of uh, advices, tips do you have for early founders uh, when they are starting off with, with uh, in utilizing their social media? Um, I think I can perhaps relate it to just what we've done, maybe, um, and I just have a couple of points. I think the first thing particularly like if you just take from experience this year, um, once you are hit by something quite unexpected, I think it's good to just sit down, take, um, can you guys hear me? We can hear you. We can. We can hear okay. You. Yeah. Um, so just take, take some time, whether it's a couple of hours or whether it's like a day, just take some time to really um, think about it and process it and accept it um, because I think the worst thing you can do is just like act like it never happened and be in denial about it and just hope that it kind of passes because if you were a brand that was hoping that COVID passes in March you would still be kind of sitting around waiting for something to happen so I think take the time you need to first accept it and accept that this is a reality. Second is once you've come up when once you've kind of go on past the denial phase. I think just being prepared now that we've, we are in another year of another crisis, um, I think it's important to always just have, um, you know, have the mindset uh, to be prepared and know what your plan is if in case something happens. Even now, you know, people are talking about the possibility of there being a lockdown in December, like end of December. Whether it happens or not, just always be prepared for what is what may or may not happen. Um, in our case, we're always, you know, before we used to stock very little product, now we stock more product uh, just in case, you know, we're unable to reach our vendors and our suppliers. We're always trying to make sure we have an open channel for deliveries and things like that. Um, and in terms of how you use social media, I think communication is vital. Um, whether you are taking a day for your team to, you know, take a break or whether you're you need, you have a whole lot of inquiries and you're unable to like get through to all of them um, or even, you know, just whatever is going on within your brand. And as a small brand, you have a very open like line of communication with your customers. I think always use social media to communicate that. Um, don't just assume that they know what's happening, whether you are delivering to only like the Gampaha region or Western province say that, use social media to convey that message. And people will, I mean, your customers will always be thankful for it. Um, in terms of looking at COVID specifically, um, I think we can all like, you know, we, we can all say that what it's done is accelerate, you know, like small businesses moving from the, and even big businesses moving from the offline space to the online space. And it's in turn made, um, you know, each market a lot more saturated. And as a small business, sometimes it can be increasingly difficult to stand out um, without really like creating the best of the best. And sometimes as a small business, it's very difficult to do that. You know, you don't have the money for a social media manager, a photographer, a stylist and all those things. Um, and this is usually the biggest challenge for a small business. Um, but having said that, one thing I've noticed is now customers are far more comfortable and far more aware of hard sales. Um, they are much more reluctant to buy things for the sake of being told to do so. Um, and as a business, it's you know our job to create the right experience to convince our customers to buy a product. You know, post COVID and particularly in the middle of this year, like customers are a lot a lot more emotional, um, you know, when you are by being able to provide them a service and by showing them that you care uh, about what they're going through, perhaps identify with what they're going through. I think you're able to create a bond with your customers and this is far more important um, and easier to do using social media than anything else. And and in our case, you know, it's not about like what um, is like, you know, and what and why. And it's mostly about like the emotion behind the gifting. And um, that's what we try to do because we focus our attention 
on the customer using social media. Um, yeah, I think, sorry, that probably covers uh, what I was trying to say. Yes, yes. Communicating the right brand values is very important uh, when it comes to a startup. Um, uh, thank you so much for this tips, uh, Rafia. Uh, uh, so, Shamima, uh, so what sort of advice do you have in terms of building a personal brand uh, from the scratch? So, what sort of problems did you face when you were starting off and like how did you resolve them? Do you have any tips, advices on this? Um, so, basically, I would like to, you know, add on to what um, Nafia and then Roshana Lee added. So especially when it comes to having a personal brand and any startup for that matter, you have to realize that your business will run only as much as you believe in it, right? So if you yourself are going to have doubts about sales that you can make or the prospects that you can attract, then that energy, the doubt that you're going to put forward is going to show to your customers. So first and foremost is like uh, Roshana Lee said that you have to believe in your vision. So it's not always about how many sales you can make or if you can hit your monthly targets. As a business owner, a founder of someone in a high position, what you have to hold on to is the vision that you have. Just because you have a ba bad month this month or you do not hit your targets for this week does not mean that it has anything to say about who you are and what you're capable of. So always lean back into your vision while you have the targets for your weekly and your monthly goals. They are only as an indicator, but what they essentially act as is like stepping stones, right? Just because you miss one doesn't mean you cannot move ahead. So that's the first advice that I have, that don't always rely on the targets that you have, but always hold on to the vision that you have for your business. Why are you doing what you're doing? You know, what is your inner calling? You know, have that driving factor as your leading force, as opposed to the metrics to say what you're capable of and who you are. And secondly, I feel that especially when it comes to building a personal brand or starting up, whether it is product or service based, you have to realize that your business does not have anything or any say on to what your self-worth is, right? So this again goes back to my initial point that you have to realize that whatever you are working on, especially when you are having a personal brand where you are the face of your business, you have to realize that whatever happens to you has no connection to your self-worth. Just because you have a good sale doesn't mean now you are a winner or if you have a bad sale, now you're a loser. You're worthy irrespective of the results that you get. It's only when you disconnect yourself from your business and take care of yourself as your business as a tool and you yourself as a leader can you push through difficult times like the crisis that we're facing right now? And the third thing I want to say in terms of building a personal brand using social media is to ensuring that whatever you're posting online is aligned to who you are. You know, especially we live in a time where there are so much of people who say what you should do on social media and what you should not do, you know, post this, post at this time, look at this insight, look at this metrics. But at the end of the day, when you are just blindly following all the metrics and you're losing yourself in the picture, then there is no real winning, you know, because there are so many people who have been doing things that kind of deviates from the so-called metrics that you're supposed to follow when they go viral and they just hit it off from there. So I believe that especially when it comes to a personal brand, what people are looking for is you. So all you got to do is just show up as your best self and have fun with your audience because they genuinely want to connect with you. And the very fact that they have followed you and they're watching your stories and liking your posts and interacting in the comments, it shows that they have a genuine concern or connection with you. And finally, I want to say is that you have to realize that people love to buy, but they hate to be sold, 
right? To repeat again, people love to buy that they're here to be sold. So just because you want to make sales, it doesn't mean you have to always go up on social media on your posts and your stories and, hey, guys, I got this, buy it, buy it, buy it. No, just have fun. Just tell them how it can transform their lives. Always portray the value. Then people who really feel inclined to you, you will attract them like magnets even though you are not being so-called salesy, right? Um, and also, this is a very interesting fact that I read up on the news the other day, that during the COVID, there are so many billionaires who doubled and tripled their money, right? So the rich who really do not have to do the selling during this time because they have enough and more to lean back on, they are selling, which is why they are getting richer and richer. So your startup or whatever you're starting right now needs you more than ever. Um, because if the rich can do it, so can we, as long as we have the right mindset and keep learning and implementing. So yeah, hope that helps. Yes, thank you so much, Shamima. So uh, basically, um, you, you need to believe in what you are selling and uh, you don't really need to hop on uh, the fact that you are selling something but yes. utilize social media to communicate the message right across just like all these brands who are present here today is doing um, the the message can be uh, as portrayed as uh, Nafia does or as uh, knowledge sharing as Roshanali does or as um, uh, what you do Shamima so uh, thank you so much for that insight uh, so this uh, next set of questions is for uh, an overall question for um, all three of you. Uh, so tell me the more uh, the kickass moment and the worst moment in your life as a founder or co-founder or a CEO, for that matter. Yeah, Rosh, you can go first. Yeah, so I will start with the worst moment and end it with the best moment. So worst moment per se, uh, I didn't uh, go through a worst moment uh, during after I started uh, Spark, but I started with the worst moment of my life. So that is like now uh, after four months having almost 20 clients, I am so proud of what I believe in and what I have created so far. So my worst moment would be starting up like uh, the struggles that I had to go through and like being a founder is not only about selling a product or a service. You are your finance guy, you are your HR guy, you are your marketing guy. You are basically handling everything. So um, I, of course, didn't know where to start i had the idea i knew like i need to provide this kind of a service i need to build this community but i didn't know where to start so and also i was not in a position to tell anybody as i said earlier that i'm starting something like this so i created my own website i did my own marketing and everything so being a founder and starting from the bottom and being here is the kick-ass moment, I would say, uh, after four months and uh, uh, like achieving small, small milestones, I would say. Though every smile, uh, milestone and every little achievement, I mean, I still can remember in August when I uh, got my first client, um, I was in a, like a restaurant because I was so afraid to stay at home and work because um, because at that moment, even I haven't told my parents that I'm working on my own business. So when I got my first client, I was like, yeah. So like, I mean, um, that was like my one of my proudest moments. And uh, here I am today, like with 20, almost 20 clients and also like with the uh, targets for 2021 and almost like getting there also. So yeah, that would be my key cash moment also. So basically yeah. your worst moment led you to your best moments in life. Exactly. Uh, Navia, what about you? Um, I think I think most of my best moments were probably in like our first year. Um, I, mo mostly because I just think 
when I started, we did it on such a whim and I just didn't really think that it would be as successful as it was. Um, and a lot of little things happened in the first year that gave us a lot of validation uh, and made us really act like it gave us belief in our product. Like not to say that we didn't have any belief, but it just helped, you know, like make us feel a little bit more confident. Um, I think like, you know, we don't, neither of us, me and my partner don't come from like business background. So even like six months or six to eight months in, I had no idea how to write a business proposal. I didn't know how to do a pitch deck. I didn't even know what a pitch deck was. Um, but I just, you know, like we took part in like this competition uh, in our first year uh, and we did pretty well. Like, um, you know, we were able to present our, our business to like a, a board of uh, investors from Sri Lanka and from abroad. And we were the only women who ended up in the final. So it was really great to also like represent women. So it was all like a, a lot of little exciting little bits that happened. And also in our first year, um, we got our first large corporate sale, um, which was, which was like, yay, that was, that was also really great. Um, and I think, you know, the first, like lots of things just make you feel more confident in what you're doing, um, I think. And then I think the worst moments, there are lots of like little bad moments, right? Like as an entrepreneur, it's very lonely. It's not, it's not the most, it's not the best for anyone's mental health. And I think those little moments that really make you question what you're doing. And like, for example, when with COVID and with the Easter tax last year and everything just like comes to a standstill and then you wonder whether you're doing the right thing or whether you should be doing what you're doing. And it's just a collection of all those little things, which I'm sure any any entrepreneur goes through. And um, yeah, those are the, the bad dips. I, I think uh, like we, we just go through all those bad things and we just have to go through it either way. And uh, probably we, we just have to make sure that we make it better for ourselves to and cushion as much as possible to like uh, to endure those painful moments i guess uh, shamima what about you it makes you strong shamima yeah for me um, like originally i would like to start with the negative and end it with a positive note so for me the worst moment surprisingly was to get my family members on board. Like, especially when you say you want to go out there and even you don't have an idea about what exactly you're going to do. Because there was a time like when people are asking, hey, what are you doing? I'm like something. And I was kind of, I was not as confident as I am today for me to go out and say, because you you are hit by imposter syndrome because you're like, okay, who do I think I am to say, I, to give yourself a title per se. Um, so, and when you are trying to convey to your close family members, you know, they are not necessarily, they, it's not that they don't want you to succeed, but it's just that they want to protect you. And in their attempt to protect you from getting damaged, they are hurting you even more. So for, that was my worst moment, if I were to say, to really build my self-confidence, my self-worth, and really be assertive about what is it I want to do. So that time was like an emotional turmoil and I was an emotional wreck at that time, you know, figuring things out. And in terms of kick-ass moment, I would say that once I started um, building my confidence, again, I feel that your business is only going to be as good as you are. If you are going to feel so low about yourself and your business, then that will portray. This is something that I mentioned before as well. So for me, the kick-ass moment was when I really started focusing on my mindset, I realized that even if I was not going out there and doing that big pitching thing, you know, things were like working out to me. I don't know if it was God-given opportunities or if I had really cracked the law of attraction, the manifestation, whatever. But when you realize that, wait, you have been underestimating yourself and what you're capable of doing and you're hitting more than your targets. So that was very amazing to me. And especially with social media, I feel like, especially with what I'm doing in terms of personal branding, I really love how it's not restricted to your physical environment where you can literally connect with someone from the other side of the world. So that was like a really kick-ass moment for me. Okay, thank you so much. I guess like different startup founders has different uh, ways of uh, uh, 
like dealing with the pain points to where they are going to do now right now so we we do have um, so we have we have the question from the audience i'm not sure whether to entertain this or not this is inosh who is directing the question so i'm not sure whether he's actually being joking about it or not but i'm anyway going to entertain it because it sounds like fun um so uh, he has asked before we move into our the last part of our conversation let's just entertain this question because uh, this is the inosh who is asking the king of social media we can't ignore him <laughs> no kidding but it's very interesting so um, it's a question about uh, if you get a million dollars tonight what do you do differently that's the question so who wants to go first i'm not going to give you like a rosh do you want to try <laughs> uh, you are on mute um, differently first of all i would buy a ps5 because i love the game and differently of course um i would invest in my business so uh because um, i would say like like i said i try to create value for my clients so sometimes um i kind of uh, work more and to provide that kind of a value so uh part of it i would invest back into my business to keep it going there in this and to build the community and uh, other half of it i would probably uh give it to mental health because that is something that i'm standing up for uh, building mental health uh, awareness in sri lanka so probably give it to mental health but first of all ps5 nafia I think one of my biggest problems is just the fact that I have too many ideas and I don't have enough time to execute my ideas. So I'll just hire a whole bunch of people to just <laughs> like this is this is what you need to do for me. Yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Uh what about Shamima? So basically <laughs> I would not buy a PS5. Um I don't know. I think I would increase my um revenue streams. so i would invest in something and i would purchase a house and give it on rent and then i would automate my current business and in terms of charity i mean i would still do it but i guess initially rather than me sitting aside from the million dollars what i will do is invest into my business and the profits generated by the business i can have um uh, what do i say a percentage going for the charity so i guess i would establish myself and increase my income stream so <laughs> working strategically with it thank you thank you inosh for that lovely question uh yeah she's she's being so diplomatic about i'm just being me you know i can just have like a hardcore philosophical conversation in the middle of the night so yeah <laughs> yeah so uh, this is the last segment of our uh, uh, panel today um so the this question is about the again the advice tips that you can give um uh, roshan ali uh, so as a founder who has been thriving in crisis since the start of your brand what sort of advice or tips do you have for founders uh, to thrive in a crisis success yeah yeah sasmin so i would um emphasize on networking a lot because um like i said there is a boom in the startup community and also um buying local focus on the local businesses and uplifting that local business community so you need to know what's happening in the startup community and also like small businesses or in business gender so i would say network 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 because that because uh, sometimes there is a limit that you can speak for yourself but also like if you network and uh, if you promote other businesses i mean that doesn't cost you much i mean it's zero right so if you can promote your friends products and uh, like give reviews by them and also like give reviews and recommend i mean i know like there is no personal 
benefit for you but i mean do some good thing uh, because we are all trying to survive in this pandemic situation so i would say uh, we need to help each other a lot and also like uh, we cannot go to like physical meetings and network events or anything like that so get into like get uh, like other virtual events and network with people kickass is a great opportunity to meet all these amazing uh, women and to know how they are doing their businesses and because so many of them have come a have come a lot, long way so there's so many things for me to learn as a very small business i mean just we are i'm just starting up but there are so many amazing women who have done this for so long and like and also like in like because people are there to actually help and if you can, if you don't know anything you can also like ask and uh, educate yourself because people are there to help you so i would say network and also share your knowledge uh, it's not only you you are not going to survive alone in this situation or in, i mean in any business you're not going to survive alone you you need your employees you need your suppliers you need your customers and all everybody environment everything you need so make sure that you protect you believe in yourself you protect your brand your what you are uh, giving to your uh, customers and clients and also like network build that community around you thank you rosh um uh, yeah so networking is very important and like uh, there are so many groups uh, that you can join on facebook to on on lot of social media platforms and then like uh, you can attend uh, incubation programs to now there are virtual accelerator programs that you can actually connect with the startup founders to uh, ecosystem builders and work together with them to in order to develop your businesses so there are so many options available in the sri lanka startup ecosystem itself and because of opening up uh, digital boundaries and uh, so there is so many virtual um, events which are available like recently i went to uh the, this is something that came across to me like just remembered uh because of you mentioning networking i went to like a yc uh event which was open like which is which was open and uh, it was open for 500 female founders were there and they keep they, it's been like a month since the event happened and they still keep talking to each other and like all 500 I I I have been I was I had to stay up from like 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning just to attend the event but it was so worth it so the networking events are a must um, I miss that yes <laughs> uh for the trial you know Christ this that is a very important message thank you so much um Nafia so uh what sort of advice do you have for uh, founders who are just starting off uh, in terms of handling their social media um i think you need to be very open to learning and teaching because those are like uh, um i feel like it doesn't happen as often as it should be it should happen um not no but like very similar to what roshan i said like you don't know everything right and you need to be just because you come from a specific background doesn't mean you're an expert in that background there's always room to learn and there's always room to grow um one thing that has really helped me and i think is very important for any brand is when you start up just take a massive sheet of paper and just like dump everything that's in your head draw a massive bubble diagram and come up with your core values because no matter what you're faced with along the way if you have a very strong set of core values to come back to i think you will always feel like you're going in the in the right direction um a simple example could be if you're selling clothes and you know you see someone online doing a massive black friday sale and you feel like oh i should be doing any of your scamming around but then you go back to your co-guys and say actually the reason i started this brand was you know to promote sustainability and all these things and you realize actually it, it's not in line with what you really actually want to do and i think 
for us as well, you know, like as you get super involved in operations and logistics and all these things, sometimes it's very easy to forget why you started this and the reasons why you exist. And just having that in front of your face all the time or just written on your no notes on the phone for you to just refer back to will always really help you. Um, for me as well, like I always, I always think um, the way I want to run my business is at the end of the end of the day to like serve my customers and you know do that by bringing and giving them like a product that is of great quality in the most like conscious ethical and caring manner and um, if you kind of do that in the same way I think you'll stand out online and offline. Thank you Nokia. yeah that is really helpful. Um, uh, I, I, I also think uh, that uh, when a founder is uh, starting off uh, one thing that I have also seen and uh, working with a lot of founders I have seen a lot of uh, founders who are open to uh, learn as well as teach and that is amazing so there is a part of a uh, group of founders who are willing to do that and I think like uh, for if it is if you are a new founder if you are planning to start up your own business uh, have always have that open mind sit because that is one the first thing I learned when I joined uh, the ecosystem building that uh, aspect of the ecosystem. Uh, the it is so difficult for us to provide you a service if you are not open to receive it. So if you really want to do something and if you want help, uh, there, there's so many like anyone would be willing to help. You just have to drop a message to anyone. Like in the ecosystem, one great thing about us. Our Sri Lankan ecosystem is like everyone is so willing to help and support and learn, uh, teach and uh, learn from you. So uh, if you are a founder who, or if you are someone who wants to start your own business, that is one good thing that you are, you are going to become a part of uh, such a great uh, spirited ecosystem. So Shamima, um, what sort of messages do you have for CEOs out there, women CEOs out there who are working through a crisis in order to utilize their social media? So the first thing I would say is to give yourself permission to start small. You know, especially sometimes when we have this idea, it's so natural for us to look at the giants in our particular field. And we always compare ourselves with them and we are putting ourselves in a very negative, toxic environment internally and externally. So I feel like this is one of the first things that I had to really integrate into my mindset that it's okay to start small. It's okay if you are a beginner. And having this attitude also means that you are always constantly learning and upgrading not just yourself, but also the way you carry out your business. And again, going back to not comparing yourself, because you don't necessarily have to be a duplicate of someone to be successful. As long as you embody your higher self and show out there, then you can easily build a personal brand, right? Because the calling is in there, to, in you for a purpose. And we just got to understand that. And also when it comes to handling everything on your own, it's easy for us to fall into a burnout, which is why I think it is better for you to work smart rather than work hard, even in terms of social media. And this is something that I had to learn the hard way, as in your success is not just proportional to the number of content you put it, except for the consistency perspective, you also got to make sure that you get the maximum reach for you to be effective. So look at the hashtags, the timing, the insights are there for a purpose, you know, just to make use of all the tools that's available for you, for you to maximize the results doing the same thing that you are doing. And I feel another thing is that you need to be consistent, that when you're online, you can purely base it off your mood and your feelings. Like at some point as a CEO, you need to take a step back and put your CEO hat on, which means it's okay if you're having a bad day, but sometimes if you have committed to something that you need to show up, you know, even if you are not in your best self, I mean, that's something that I had to learn and I'm constantly learning. So I think that 
when we really integrate this, that just be yourself, have fun, keep learning, keep implementing what you learn and stay consistent, the result will come eventually. You just got to have patience. Thank you, Shamima. Thank you very much for those advices. Uh, so uh, we have explored all the avenues of this uh, very interesting topic, social media in a crisis. We have spoken about handling social media and why as three different uh, brands, uh, you, uh, all these three women entrepreneurs are handling those social media and how they're handling it and what sort of advices, tips that they have uh, to give uh, all the founders of the startup community around us um, in terms of handling social media in a crisis. So I hope that uh, this conversation added value to uh, uh, whoever who has joined today with us. Uh, uh, thank you so much, Inosh, for your billion dollar, million dollar question. Uh, we really appreciate it. And thank you so much for all the ladies who joined us today and uh, are great uh, and all everyone who joined us today and all the three uh, female entrepreneurs who joined us to share their thoughts, uh, inspiring uh, words to us. Uh, 